a beautiful pair. Thanks for waiting. Thanks for waiting for me. <laughs> Thank you. We're sorry, darling. <laughs> Soaking wet there, Chopper. Surprise, surprise. Oh, oh Maggie. Hello. Oh, hey. Oh. Excuse me, Mr. Brownie. Oh. Let me get all those boxes in there. Oh, Maggie. <laughs> oh, Maggie. <laughs> Maggie's getting right in there. Oh, he's home. I feel like one of you two being rolling up next to Cruiser because someone here stinks too. Who is it? Who is it? Stinks like goat poo. Who is it? For everyone at home, Cruiser rolled in goat poo. That's yeah. why he's a bit stinky. That's why his neck's green. <laughs> oh! What you got, Joey? Silence me. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you will never silence me. I may be deaf, but I'm loud. And I'm here. Hear me. <laughs> Oh, you're crazy. <laughs> 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 
You mate holding my arm back, do you? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, is that right? Two on one, huh? Shadow doesn't want to lick anywhere but in my mouth. <laughs> I don't want your ear, I don't want your cheek, I want my tongue in your lip. Uh, uh, right in the face, Maggie. Right in the face. Right in the face, Maggie. Oh, Roscoe's under me now. Roscoe's got a good hold. Roscoe's got a good hold. I'm tired now. Choppy, that was pretty naughty of you, mate. It Jumping in there, you. trying to take advantage of Rosco like that. Wasn't it? Wasn't it, mate? I saw it. I saw it. Oh, give him chop. Give him chop. Give him chop. Go, go, go. Give him chop. Give him chop. Oh, give him chop. Oh, oh. Give him chop. Oh, good boy. 
Get, get, get oh. jump, get jump. Oh. Good boy, get jump. Good boy. Well, not you, mate. I know you can get him. I know you can get him. Joey's in on the action. Ow! Too much, too much. No. Good boy. Gentle. Good boy. All this bite work training. I don't have a sleeve on, Roscoe. Careful. Fredo's taking it seriously. Get him, Fredo. Back me up, mate. Get him, Fredo. Back me up. Maybe don't say that. Human. Joey, where's my hat? Did you destroy it? Did you destroy it, Joey? Did you destroy it, Joey? <laughs> Like, here comes my Dutch Shepherd. Come on, good boy. Come on, good boy. Oh, you want some Dutchy in here, mate? Oh, you're gonna do some plate time? Oh, oh, Rover boy. Oh, Rover boy, there it is. There it is. Oh, the sleeve work. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Oh, we got it. Oh, we got it. Ow. Ow, you're both patient. Oh, got you down. Capitalize. Oh. Ow, Roscoe, that's my skin. Got your boy. Got your boy. Got your boy.
better days. It's seen better days. It's still good. There's plenty of life left in it. Now I've just got a chin strap. So if the wind blows really hard, it doesn't come off. <laughs> Here we go. Good one, Joey. Oh yeah, she did a good job on it. Can we hit the shade? Mm-hmm. G'day guys. What a day out this is going to go. We're trying something new here. We are. And it's going to save putting our arm out for 20 minutes and getting a dead arm. <laughs> so, firstly, I'd just we, like we... to introduce you to Barney's butthole. Oh, stop it. Look at it. Now that's, uh, that's out of the way and everyone was thinking it and I would just addressed no it. Everyone was thinking it. Then uh, we'll get on to today's talk. So, we've, we've got the phone propped up on a tree stump. Yeah. Um, because we the the uh, tripod has been um... deemed as too entertaining or scary for some dogs, <laughs> and the selfie stick has similar um, problems, problems associated with it. Yeah. So someone had a wonderful idea um, about just propping the phone up, putting um, like some wood blocks on certain trees around the property. You know, you could have like ten different spots, and mm. um, it would be that you know we just rest the the phone um, on those spots and that's where we do our talks. Mm. So that was a good idea. We're not prepared today to do that. But no, but we thought we'd wedge it up against that stump there and it looks like it's doing all right. So let's ride it while it it's still okay. It means we have to sit down. Yeah. So we'll probably have a few doggies. Um, all sit, over the place. Yeah, all over the place. Um, so firstly, oh. I thought we would just give a bit of a recap for uh, for all our new audience that may not know all the dogs in detail and then also just um, a bit of a nicety to go over uh, the dogs and their behaviours and their personalities for those who have been following us for a while just to give a bit of a refresher. Yep. Mm -hmm. So why don't we start? We can start. Um, we, we should go in some kind of order. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. So we can, we can... The very first dog would be cutie pie. I'm um, sorry, Tilly, sorry. Oh, you're gonna go in that order? Yeah, right, as okay. we got them? Yep, sure. We might get confused halfway through. Oh, we're 100% gonna get confused. I was just gonna go in the order that I feed them because I know that order inside out. Oh. The way that I lay their bowls out. Oh. Which way do you want to do it then? Well, I just thought that if we did We got that many the... dogs, it's hard to keep track of them all. That's what's going on here. I just thought if we did it in the order of which they um, came into our life, then um, that would then give some information to everybody mm. also, you know, like in terms yeah. of how the pack might have changed as that do those dogs were introduced and, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, it does feel a little bit to me though that we've been that busy and oh, everything's just rolled into a one. beautiful cuddle tan. And I feel like they all got here at the same time. <laughs> And then one day we woke up and we just had over 20 dogs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Walk out into my lounge room and go, oh, that's right. <laughs> We're crazy dog people. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it feels like that. I think probably because it happened in such a short period of time, maybe. Mm. You know, like if we think back to... Um, you know, when it all started, it was um, August. Look at Maggie, <laughs> she's got her face right up to the kill lens. Um, it was, what was it again? August 2021. 20, 21. 21, yeah. 
It was 21, what wasn't was it? was it 2020? No, 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 it was... Oh, goodness. L, L was turning four, wasn't she? Because it was the beginning of COVID. Wolfie was only just born. He was six weeks old. Maybe it was December when, 2020, um, and so it would have been August 21. When was Wolfie born? July. 21. July 21. It is 21. Yeah, sorry, everyone. It is It is 2021. Right. Because Wolfie was six weeks old when Fredo, um, Conrad, Bobby, all of them came to the farm and right. we got locked down. Okay. Yeah. So, um... Yes. So coming up to two years. Almost two years, yes. It's gone from three dogs to 20 dogs, a dingo, and two cats. Like I said, feels one day. Feels like it's all been one long day. <laughs> um, so Tilly was... Um, the first doggy that came into our life, Tilly the red cattle dog. Mm. Look at Tilly. Look at that. Yeah. Come over here. You beautiful girl. Yeah, Tilly's Tilly's mum was losing a battle with with cancer and knew that Tilly was gonna outlive her and so started looking at options for Tilly and had a a very elderly woman lined up out in the middle of the country somewhere yeah. and just was really concerned about Tilly being such a young crazy cattle dog out there mm -hmm. that she was going to end up getting herself into trouble and yeah with like wild pigs, wild pigs and snakes. snakes and all the rest of it and we know what Tilly's like she totally would have done that yeah and so Till was a daycare dog yes she was yeah. a client that used to come up to daycare trips uh -huh. And Tilly loved the farm. Loved the farm. And so Rox loved, Roxy, loved the girls. Roxy knew that she loved the farm, loved mm. the kids, you know. Yeah. Um, but she, she, she wouldn't dare ask us. She no, was such a lovely lady. Such a lovely lady, wasn't and, she? Yeah. And we offered to take Tilly. She did express her concern yeah. about Till Till um, being uh, a treated as a bit of a um mm. like a like just outside you yeah. know as a working dog and then worrying about her fate you know it, up there in that situation um mm. she you know and we know too and um she does things without thinking like in terms of like running head first into danger uh so in yeah. terms of the whole um fear of um you know, wild pigs and snakes and stuff like that. It was very warranted. Yeah, she would have had no fear. Yeah. Um, she just and, would have gone well, in there. But Roxy was very fearful of, of that. And, yeah, because it would have been a bad consequence. Yeah. And I remember I remember being on the phone at our old property and I just said to Roxy. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, we, we shouldn't say that we offered. We should say that Sam offered <laughs> without consulting me You're at all. Yeah. But you're totally fine about it. Oh, absolutely. It's just, it's just that I remember being on the phone and poor Roxy, and this this literally was a week before she passed away. Yeah. And she's on the phone and um, she was... She was um, so worried about Tilly. And I remember yeah. just saying, do, do you want her to come and live with us, Roxy? You know, just send her up on the bus next time yeah. with all the things and don't you worry. Unfortunately, she was in a really bad way at that point. And um, poor Tilly got dropped off at the bus for the last time. Yeah. With a collar and a lead and half a bag of food. <laughs> that was it. And it did, it did take its toll on Till. Yeah. Didn't it? Even yeah. though she loved um, the life, like. You know, we were she giving her a great her life. She missed her She mom. missed her mum. She, missed she was so close to her mum, and her mum was so sick. Mm. And knowing Tilly, Tilly she got would have really been... protective. Yeah. And then got really protective. Used to um, tell all the other dogs to go away from my mum. You know, she did, she's not doesn't want you coming up and knocking her over. But in Tilly's enthusiasm, she would pull Roxy over. Yeah. And so she couldn't walk Tilly anymore. Um, but so when Till came here. Yeah. Um, she was really out of sorts for about 18 months, wasn't she, mm -hmm. before she really settled in? Yeah, because every Christmas, 
Roxy's family would come get Tilly to go back to their place they for did. Christmas. Yeah, for yeah. A few years. Yeah, they did. And because um, the, she had two older boys like yeah. in their 20s and you know they were off um they they had their own lives like they were traveling the world, they were mm. overseas and but they'd come back for Christmas. Yeah. Um and, and Tilly would represent their mum. That's you know. right. So they felt close to their mum um you know sp- spending Christmas with Till. Yeah. Um so yeah, so that's that's Tilly. Like I think we, I was we were going to try and talk about you know personalities and strengths and all those she, kind she, of she's got such a strong backstory though it was hard to yeah, we... not recap on that yeah but uh tilly she is a full-on cattle dog she sure is she just runs head first full steam at any livestock animal and you know most dogs will run up and bark and dance around a little bit tilly just sprints full speed until it's like a lion hunting a gazelle, you know. <laughs> just will not even skip a step. Just yeah. full steam. We o- we often like we'd see her, you know, um, charge the goats or oh. go for a tire or yeah. something like that. And we'd we'd say to each other, She's um, thinking about. We could totally see her taking on a big bull. Oh you yeah. You know, like. She's, and just loving it, like getting thrown around by the bull and getting a few nips in on the bull's heels and just thinking that was the best day of her life, you know? <laughs> yeah. Just loving it. Yeah. So Till is um, nine this year. So we've had Tilly for six years now. And um, she's definitely slowing down, hasn't she? Oh, yeah, yeah. She's, you know? she's slowing down. She used to be the fastest at the farm. Yeah. Like so fast. Yeah, she was the fastest at the farm, hands down. Like I used to do these quad bike runs out the side of this fence here, just to our left, mm. on the right hand side of your screen. And I used to ride the quad bike on the outside, and all the dogs would be running on the inside. And I could not catch Tilly on the quad bike. Mm. She would just, and I could always think, where is she? Where is she? And she'd just always be out in front of me. Mm. And then uh, it was almost like within a space of six months, she went from being the top, the fastest, everything to all of a sudden you could see she was starting to get sore and slowed down. So that would have been when she was about four and a half, five. Yeah. And on and when um when Tilly was given to us, um, you know, we were obviously told that, you know, she is was probably gonna, gonna struggle with yeah. arthritis and um when she was one mobility. She before got, she was one. Before she was one. So while she was still a pup, yeah. um, she had been run over by a bus and mm. crushed one whole side of her body. Down at Centennial Park. Mm. Yeah. And you know she would have just been attacking the tyre of the bus. Like, that's Tilly. Yeah. You know? And, um, and we were told that they had to reconstruct um, yeah. a whole ha- half, half, of half of her, her body. body. So um, they said, of course, lot. she's going to have some ailments and some soreness later in later life, in life yeah. and arthritis and everything. And you can already see Tilly's stride is very short. Mm. She doesn't spring out like um, most dogs. It's a very short stride and very mm. straight legs. Doesn't bend them very often. She had she had some seizures there for a while. She did I know too. People, yeah. um, she had some seizures. People yeah. have asked about that, like an update, and um, she hasn't done it for a while. We went and got scans done and everything, mm. and um, nothing significant came out no. of it that was of concern. And um, she had them there for about six months, and she hasn't had any since. Mm. So I don't really know what that was all about, but. But I, I do it was believe. was concerning at the time. After that, she has definitely really slowed down. Yeah. Um, you know, she she does prefer to stay back at the house um, with the kids. Yeah, she doesn't. And... She doesn't come chasing the motorbikes anymore. Mm. Like every now and again, she appreciates she'll do it. Um, like outings like this. Yeah. Um, as do uh, a number of our pack members now. Mm. They're not. They're not able to do the uh, the daycare routine anymore. Um, no. So, yeah. So that's um. Good Til- old Tilly. Yeah. Good deal. She's a she's a high ranking member of the pack, though, isn't yeah. she? She's right up there. She'll Likes sit to in the tell everybody about it. She'll sit in the 
just sit in the kitchen and just watch a dog walk past and just chop him on the ankle and say, could have got you. <laughs> She's like, Oh, is that you? Is that what you do, Churchill? Oh, you little ankle biter. Oh, chilly girl. Um, Good girl, chilly. Good girl. Her Ooh. best friend, um, above all else, is Cutie Pie. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. Where is Cutie Pie? Oh, there she is. Right behind us, sitting perfectly <laughs> still. Little cutie. Oh, cutie. Yeah, she loves Cutie Pie, oh, doesn't she? Um, she also loves every time I put on my boots. She jumps up into my arms and says hello. She okay. likes Joey, but her but Joey and Tilly uh, do have a little scuffle now and then, don't they? Yeah. Two working dogs, like they speak the same language and yep. they respect each other. Joey's but Joey's got some guarding tendencies she that does, she yeah. lashes out to Tilly on, and Tilly just goes, "Excuse me." Yeah. Oh, straight back. <laughs> Because a lot of people, uh, so a lot of people, uh, dogs at the farm are people, aren't they? They're um, our people. They're uh, crazy. A lot of the dogs' um, response to Joey having a go at them is, yes, Joey, yes, Joey, sorry, Joey, you know? Yeah. But Teal's just like, mm -mm. stuff you, Joey. Yeah. Don't talk to me like that. Like, what are you, a Kelpie? <laughs> I'm a cattle dog. I'm a red cattle dog. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm a red healer. Oh, be careful. Oh, be careful. Oh, oh, too, too. It's okay. It's okay. Just but lift, she absolutely oh, adores yeah. cutie pie. Here we go. That's Don't you do. Oh, good girl. Oh, good girl, darling. Yeah. <laughs> good girl. Um, yeah. So loves cutie. Loves used, to, cutie. used to really worship Wally and Charlie, too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, and I think that when Wally passed, it changed to it. It did actually, yeah. So when was that? That was nine, 2019, yeah. Mm. And then Ch Charlie passed 2020. Yeah. As soon as- And then Tilly adopted the role as head dog. Mm, yeah. So, and she became serious. Very serious. Yeah, took her, prior, took prior her, to that, she was... Took her role very seriously. Very seriously. Responsibility. Because Wally did the same. Yeah. Um, Hello, so Joey. then Joey came along. Oh. Here's oh. Joey. Oh. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, we... Um, did Joey come along? Oh, or you mean as in, or was it cutie pie? It was it cutie pie. Oh. You were already confused. That's what I mean. Because cutie, yeah, okay. cutie pie it was 2020, was she? 2020 Christmas. Christmas, uh, like because Chommy um, passed away in the, I think it was, he was here for Halloween and I think he passed in November. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, okay. So it must have been cutie pie. So it was Tilly and then cutie pie. I think so. Yeah. Because I feel like I feel like Joey came third in that trio. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think you're right. So, um so Cutie Pie came along. Oh. And she's the only dog that um hasn't been adopted in our pack. Yeah. Um Elle really wanted a pug. She said I really want a pug. I want forever. a pug. I want a pug. Yeah. Cuz we had so many puggies at daycare mm. and she um she actually had a very special bond with one in particular, Flo. Flo, um, yeah. And um, Flo was just the best dog on the planet. In in well, in Elle's mind, but also our mind too. We love Flo. Flo was cool. Just absolutely beautiful. Um, the cutie pie does remind me of Flo. Oh yeah. A little bit. Um, anyway. Um, L had a very special bond with Flo, um, and ever since that, she always wanted, a, wanted pug. a little puggy of her own. So um, we sought out, um, you know, one of the breeders that was, you know, very good mm -hmm. um, with puggies, and. Um, yeah, cutie pie came along at Christmas time. Yeah, 
and um, she was so teeny tiny, wasn't she? She was mini. And although our pack was nothing at all because all it was was Tilly, um, we at that time, um, that was pre-COVID, yeah. so our holiday pack um, was often quite large and then we had daycare as well. So we often had anywhere from 15 to 40 dogs, you know, um, every day. 15 being in the evening, you know, or yeah, weekends. Yeah. Uh, so our main goal for Cutie Pie was um, that she... Became a robust little dog to yeah, handle. Yeah, it was, our, it was our biggest concern was that we... Because we, you know, we, we had a lot of little dogs that came to daycare. And um, they struggled with big dogs. Some of them, not all of them, but the one where we saw, you know, hey, cutie pies to, to handle this kind of life, um, she's just going to have to be incredibly brave. That's what we thought, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. And so um, it was all about um, her developing confidence and. You know, understanding the body language and social dynamics of all the other dogs, so that she could confidently navigate a large pack of big dogs. Yeah. And anytime she felt unsure or nervous, I taught her just to come stand by me, mm -hmm. um, give her that security blanket. She she adopted it very very quickly, and then that's been her ever since. She's been little. Excuse, we... excuse my French, she's been a little boss bitch, hasn't she? <laughs> Cutie Pie's a mate. He's so... Oh, sorry. He's so beautiful. Yeah. 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 He's so beautiful. Oh, boy. Yeah, hello, darling. She absolutely adores the kids. You know, she's got that special bond with Elle. Yeah. Um, and she's so tough, isn't she? Ah. Just... <laughs> The amount of time she gets barrel rolled and she just pops back up and keeps going like it was nothing. And um, the amount of times that dogs um, give her all the signals of, I'm a big tough dog. Yeah. And she just goes, Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I don't see it. Yeah. I've seen worse than you. Have you seen my big brother, Freddo? You know? <laughs> yeah, so, but that stage he wasn't there. No true but um she did extremely well uh, Fantastic in daycare, navigating yeah. daycare and daycare yeah. was dangerous in oh, a yeah. sense for, for her for a dog like cutie pie um because we had small dog day for small dogs um and some small dogs came on other days but cutie pie was in amongst those 40 I dogs i knew i felt a green air bite yeah i saw it on maggie i flicked it off it might have gone Thanks. on you sorry um you know, but she was running alongside 40 big, excited, intense dogs that are running full ball after a motorbike or hitting. And she, and she would be right in the thick of it too. She wouldn't, try, wouldn't get out ball. of the way, nothing. Sometimes she was jumping in the pool. Um, sometimes she was jumping in the pool with this big pack of dogs and the big ball, yeah. you know. And, and she could swim, but we ended up having to put a life jacket on her because the other dogs would just swim over the top of her and push her down. Yeah. Oops, there's one on Till Till. We must be near. Yeah. Um, so that's Cutie Pie. What then, else? Then we got, then we got Joey. Joey <coughs> the Kelpie. Joey the Kelpie. Uh, Joey. Good girl, darling. Who came to us from a Kelpie rescue with the disclaimer that she was untrainable. Remember that? Mm. Yeah. yeah. But I do think that maybe if we were to put that more in context for everybody, it might make more sense. Like, I imagine that that was just a term that was probably maybe... Um, untrainable. <laughs> Let's not dumb it down here. <laughs> untrainable. Well, I just thought that maybe... Um, like with Kelpies, often, um, you know, a, a lot of their performance uh, does reside on their breeding and their in, instinctual um, 
traits so maybe she just didn't present and then it's you know like how much effort are they going to put in to train her to be as good as the other kelpies that maybe showed it more naturally do you think oh goodness master. i'm not sure but you what's your opinion untrainable yeah <laughs> It is a really big thing to put out there, isn't it? On that a, a rescue, a dog rescue place. This okay, dog goodness, is untrainable. Let's not, shh, we're not going to. We don't want to poo-poo too much, you know. Hey, I wasn't going to make a fuss of it. You're the one that played it down. I'm like, let's not play it down. <laughs> let's call it how it is. Mm. So, untrainable. Anyway. She turns up. She's this sweet little red Kelpie. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah. And, you know, she just straight away, the first two seconds that I saw her, she jumped straight into my arms, gave me a big snuggly cuddle, you know, and I was like, oh, Walzers, this is an affectionate little dog. And then I started, you know, doing some work with her, asking her to sit. She didn't know how to sit. She didn't know how to do anything, you know. So did a bit of work with her and within maybe 10 minutes, you know, started to get her working, doing some basic obedience. Cruiser. Good boy. Doing some basic obedience with her. And then so we just walk into the playground with all the other dogs. And then we saw what they were talking about. <laughs> Didn't we? We're well, we're around. just... Missed... We're thinking, oh, yeah, this is all right. She's, she's no dramas. And then all of a sudden, the other dogs, we, we started a game and the other dogs increased their intensity. And then Joey just went... I love his intensity! Let's go! And just teeth came out. <coughs> just air snapping at everything, wasn't she? Yeah, but really, um, really typical Kelpie in that environment. Like, you know, but obviously... I don't think so. I don't think it's really typical Kelpie. I think that she's definitely on the upper echelon of that category because she had a very, very strong drive to bite when most Kelpies have a standard drive to bite and then some have no drive to bite, they just want to herd. So she she definitely was up there with, I want to bite anything that's running, anything that's moving, mm. I want to bite it. Livestock, dogs, cats, anything. Yeah. Motorbikes, the whole lot. Yeah, even when the livestock were stationary, she'd yeah. jump up and latch onto their faces. Mm. So it probably was not she wasn't the best dog in a sheep station. No, she would she's... have been all right on cattle. Mm. But sheep sheep and goats, she's too tough for them. So um, at that time, we had um, two working dogs, Tilly and um, Joey. And both had the... <laughs> the extreme bite drive. <laughs> Nipping issues. Yeah. Um, herding... Uh, so, you know, they needed quite a bit of training, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, Joey needed a lot of to... training, but Joey came good really fast. Didn't she? Now yeah. she's just, she's such a good, like a high performer. Um, yeah, so she, she replaced... True Kelpie in that. Yeah. She ended up replacing Wallace as my demo dog for training. Tilly did a little bit of it, but she was old by that stage as well, Tilly. She still came out and showed everyone she still got it. Till, Till's, Till was very impressive. Yeah. Because she went so hard on like activities. Cruiser. Run. Activities like the big ball and yeah. that. Um, her her demonstration when she disengaged yeah, um, at full on. speed was like, it was very impressive. Mm. Yeah. Wasn't it? Chill, chill. Watch, watch a chill, good girl. Yeah. So we're up to three. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So that was. Um, what, what, what are we um, up to then? 2020, is it? Yeah, who was next? How did it become four? Well, I don't think it did. I think it went from three to... Did it go... Was it the German Shepherd puppies at that point? I think it was, yeah. yeah. 
I think it was the Three Shepherds. Yeah. So, so, so that was, um, we, the business got shut down for COVID lockdown. Um, and that was when we saw that poor D, her facility was being closed down. And she had this number of dogs that... She had um, nowhere to take them. They were all going to get put to sleep. They were the ones that had, you know, weren't, were struggling to be adopted, you know, because yeah. they had some behavioural issues and, you know, like we're talking Freddo and um, Jake and uh, Bobby and Conrad yeah, and yeah. all of those. Yo-Yo. Lucy. So, uh, Lucy. So, um, we thought, let's just give them a day at the farm because no one's here, you know, the, yeah, they don't the dogs need aren't to... Yeah, coming up. We can't run the business. That's so right. And, let's get them and out I'll of the make shelter. them a video each day, like a and big 20-minute video. Maybe help them get adopted. They might get adopted. Mm. And a couple of them did get adopted. Yeah. A um, couple of them went to other rescues because obviously it was a desperate situation. Dee had to move these dogs. Mm. Um, and so, but then there were a number that were left and had nowhere to go. And mm. that was when we said, well, goodness, let's just um, take those dogs on. Um, and we were able to continue to operate the business, but we, could, we, we couldn't do both. It's always been our thing. We can't do daycare and do um, the rescue work. So, or the training that's required for those types of dogs. So we just um, kept the business closed for um, another well, uh, month or yeah, something. Yeah, another couple of weeks, another month to get them sorted. Oops, sorry. And um, and then, you know, they all came to live at the farm and, and be trained. Yeah. And, that, and it was literally, I think, the next day and Lucy gave birth to Banjo, Matilda and Rosie. Yeah, so we were planning on building her a den, like a little a maternity, a maternity ward, ward yeah, <laughs> to um, to have her pups. And the and day that we were going to start work, I remember walking out to feed them all and Lucy was on the couch in the garage. Mm. And I was like, um, you know, come on, up you get, darling. And she didn't get up, which is not usual. She'd always get up, you know, to get some food. So I walked over to her and gave her a pat, and then I saw these tiny little puppies in her belly, just like with just poking out between her hair on her belly. And I remember just thinking, oh my goodness. We quickly <laughs> grabbed them, ran inside. Look at what I found. <laughs> Three little puppies. Yeah. The girls were so excited. Weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, they must have been an hour old. Aww. Like so new. And she was, she was such a good mum. She was such a good mum, very experienced yeah. mum. They, they believed that that was her seventh or eighth litter, you know, because um, yeah. her and Conrad were from a backyard breeding um, scenario. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so then um, we didn't have the initial intentions of adopting those three no. uh, little puppies. They were our first foster fails. Yeah, we and we we hadn't even thought of um, doing like Going all the other puppy part, litters yeah. or anything like that. At that point, uh, we were a daycare business, mm. <laughs> and we had um, you know the holiday boarding, and that was all um, that we were doing. We um, obviously we had this um, l like desire to at some point down the track. Um, open up our own sanctuary and do more rescue work but at this time you know this was our work this was our business yeah. and so um, because there was no forward thinking <laughs> these three little puppies came into our life and we only had Tilly Joey and Cutie Pie um, and you know after a couple of months because uh, you know obviously uh, Lucy um, we're still there with them. We just felt like, goodness, we could just open our home to them. They could stay together and just live a wonderful life on the farm because they're puppies. You know, we'll socialise them early and yep. they'll be fine to join in on the daycare pack and, you know. Um, Plus we named them. Yeah, we named them. And back then um, we hadn't done 
any rescue work like um, before and with all the social media I got a few funny um, like messages and emails of you yeah, know, we have threats yeah threatening if, if you if, don't give me I, that puppy you know and it was all very strange for us we hadn't dealt with any of that before and um, we kind of just were like, oh, goodness, like, yeah. we don't want to get involved in any of this. And and at the time, we were looking after adoptions. Um, Dee and her shelter weren't doing that, you know, like, yeah. as in all the applications. All the, all, and then they'd all come and meet and greet, and we'd have five people on a weekend come and meet all these dogs, and oh, it was just a nightmare. It was, a, it was quite mayhem. Um, we didn't have the time to do it either because, you know, we are running a, a full-time business like literally yeah. seven days a week business so um we just said listen we we will um adopt them d and they can just live a wonderful life here and and so then we had six dogs you know which just didn't seem like that much to us yeah. at the time because our lives were devoted to um animals weren't they to dogs and so these three little puppies just um, came along know, on the journey. Being a part of the daycare pack every day, and you know, um, we had so much help back then when the business was um, operating. Obviously, yeah, it hits the staff. Um, you know, we had nine staff members, so we just didn't think that. Um, well, we knew that it wasn't going to be, It'll be fine. an issue. Yeah. We got thirty-two acres, and we only had three dogs, so. We adopted those three, um, and then all the dogs that came from the shelter that you were rehabilitating, they all got adopted except for one. Good boy, good boy, mate. One big old good Rottweiler. Boy, buddy. Good <laughs> I'm just boy. gonna check that it's still filming. Yeah, okay. Good job, buddy. Yep. Wow, mate bottom is very wet <laughs> sitting in this wet patch uh, it's a big soggy part of the ground isn't it yeah um so at the end of that um you know all the dogs that got adopted that had come to the farm to be rehabilitated um you know we only had freddo left We, at that time, we didn't intend on doing any more work because we were returning back to daycare and mm. um, we were running daycare five days a week, plus we were doing boarding seven days a week and we were also running, I think, two um, group classes on Saturdays for training, like um, two groups of 20, weren't we? You know, remember that? That's right, yeah. Um, so... You know, we were really busy. We really didn't have any time to, um, you know, do any rehabilitation or anything or any kind of training for yeah. um, any more shelter dogs. Um, so we just thought, hey, what is one more? Fredo, <laughs> Fredo, no one came forward for it's him. It's kind of our motto. There was, there was no applications whatsoever for Fredo. And um, we were just moving forward. You know, we're going back to business let's just give him a home yeah. you know um and then we're at seven yeah and and we thought that's it <laughs> you know didn't we seven's a good number seven's a great number um and then so we returned to daycare as per normal now in, in this time thereabouts um lily the german shepherd had been staying with us for about three or four An months extended period of time yeah um and you know it did come to a time where Lily's owner um, did let us know that um, he could no longer look after her um, he had to look after himself yeah you know and we we were very supportive of that um, and he asked that if we could help him rehome Lily and he did ask if she could possibly go to a farm with some children <laughs> I know one of those hmm. we know one of those farms with some children don't we 
you know, and we loved Lily. She'd been here for four months and she'd gone through a tough time, yeah. and, you know, and we didn't want to, um, like... She loved the farm She, too. She loved the farm. And um, we did not want to put any more pressure on her or her dad. Yeah. Um, and so we just said, goodness, Lily can just stay here. You know, we'll adopt Lily. Uh, so then we were at eight. <laughs> Pretty quickly. Yeah. And um, again, though, let's just think about that. We had eight dogs and it probably sounds like a little bit more than normal. We are still, we were still just an average family, you know, just running a business. Um, but in our minds, we felt like, well, but all we do is dog stuff every day. All we do is care for dogs. And, yeah, it didn't, make it, it didn't make a difference. And also all of our, um, all of our staff um, were helping us care for dogs too. So, we didn't feel like um, it was too much of an extra burden. Yeah, exactly. And so, but then the next ones to come was Shadow with her litter. That's right. Yeah. So we 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 wanted to continue to help D. Yeah. Um, but of, we said to D, we can't help with um, any more dogs like you know Fredo and um yeah because uh, we were running Yo-Yo. the daycare it just wouldn't work we didn't have the time to put in and they weren't the type of dogs that could just integrate into the pack and benefit from the socialization they'd have to be isolated Abra. um so it just couldn't work chop chopper come on hello Leo. um I can't remember what happens, but somehow um, we ended up with some puppies and we thought we can do puppies because the puppies can just follow us around in daycare. Yeah. You know, they, they don't have the behavioral issues that the mature dogs have, so they can easily, um, you know, run alongside Bandit and Frankie and Gilbert and, you know, mm. and they can learn some good. Um, you know, social skills. Social skills and manners. Make some friends. Make some friends. And we, we'll try to help them all get adopted because, you know, there's so many puppies that come through the shelter. Uh, Dee told us there was 150 a year that she would get um, coming through. And we ended up um, we ended up fostering nine litters altogether um, of puppies, anywhere from... Uh, Four to... Three or three to up to, I think there was 11 was the eleven biggest one, wasn't it? Something like that. It's crazy. Anyway, um, so... Oh, sh- that was that cattle dog litter. Four mm. black and five. I remember. Yeah, I remember. But um, so Shadow came to the farm with her litter because we were helping the pup, um, D with the puppies. Mm. And... Um, that's when we introduced the rule of uh, naming them a colour mm. of their collar. Yes, so that the German Shepherd situation wouldn't happen again, even yeah. though it, it continued to happen over and over again. But um, so Shadow came along and um, with her litter, and in that litter was Miss Red and Miss Violet. Yes. So I'm thinking that Miss Red and Miss Violet were the next two. Because um, I'm pretty sure, and then Shadow, because Shadow was... No, it's definitely Miss Red and Miss Violet before Shadow. Yeah. But, when did she come in? Who? Oh, Maggie. Yeah, no, we already had um, Miss Red and Miss... I'm pretty sure... Yeah, but did we have them or did we adopt them? Because we had them for a good five months before mm. we adopted them. Well, let's just, let's just talk about... Um, Miss Red and Miss Violet. Miss, uh, Barney came before Maggie, so um, I'm pretty sure it was Miss Red and Miss That's right. Violet. That's right. So Miss Red and Miss Violet were in amongst um, Shadow's litter of puppies. Shadow! And they, they we're all talking get, about your babies. They all got adopted, but Miss Red and Miss Violet did have um, some issues as a puppy. Yeah. So, um, uh, they didn't get a... They, 
Miss Red had puppy strangles. Miss Violet had severe neurological issues. She was couldn't balance, couldn't stand up straight, walk yeah. in circles, kept falling over. And, and if she, she was knows, on a slight hill, she would just keep tumbling down the hill, couldn't get back up the hill. It's really hard to imagine. Like for yeah. people that um, have maybe only joined us in the last, I don't know, within 12 months, if they haven't seen any of puppy. the early videos, oh, shit, that was, you, what, we you wouldn't believe what we're saying. We, but can I just say though, how concerned we were for Miss Violet. Yeah, we, we were honestly, so worried she wouldn't be able to live a normal life. We, we just couldn't figure it out. How was this puppy going to survive in the world? We were so, so worried. Like, I just want that but, to be... But that was one of the deciding factors as to why we kept her, because she showed such an amazing ability to trust the pack yeah and to let the pack guide her because yeah. she couldn't see she couldn't she didn't know where she was going she used but to sit there and cry i'm we, lost and she was literally five meters away against the fence it, honestly every day we would lose her um yeah. and at she'd several just sit times. there and cry or she'd just go to she'd sleep she'd get stuck in yeah. um places we you know luke would be out with torch lights yeah, like trying to find for, looking her. in drains looking everywhere um and i remember um someone was interested in her um but the person um, went to work every day for about 10 hours a day and that really like gave me anxiety because I, I mean I said like goodness she she could strangle herself with a cord she could she was totally she could, that dog that would get herself into she was a dog crazy. that could quite somehow find herself in some very precarious position and yeah um, fall I out mean, a window she climbed up to the top of the roof of the truck like on the roof but, of the truck but and, then she couldn't get herself then, off yeah, it and, and then just sit there and we're like oh my goodness how did you even get up there and she's like yeah. i don't know so um i followed a, i followed a bug i remember the lady uh that was interested in miss violet and i said to her um possibly would you be interested in miss red instead because yeah. both of them had stayed on for an extended period purely for medical issues um so all the other puppies got adopted out but they stayed on um you know because miss red was being medicated and at the time she was still struggling with her immune system and miss violet obviously we were just trying to figure out what kind of life could she live and um she was thriving in the pack environment so i remember saying to um this lovely lady do you think that maybe you might be interested in miss red instead um and we could just make sure that she gets the all clear from the vet first and then you know that would be miss violet could stay on at the farm anyway i don't know if you want to call it fate but somehow there was this whole mess around with this poor lady remember that's right yeah. like no one was getting back to her at the shelter and so we thought she wasn't interested anymore and it ended up going out for months and months and in the end, we just said, you know, and even she said, do you think that you should just keep them both? She wanted, she was like, you know, I, I feel bad taking Miss Red away from Miss Violet now. Um, we even had people ring up and want to pay for yeah. the lifetime of Miss Red and Miss Violet, Violet staying just together so, just so on they the could farm. Stay together. Um, so I, remember, I remember saying to them, like, that's really generous, but. Yeah. We're not we're not going to keep these dogs on the basis of someone paying us to do so. Yeah, no, but their intentions were very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we needed to make a decision as a family. That's right. And we needed to take responsibility for them. But it was a bit of it was I remember it being um quite a difficult one for us um making the decision as to what was right me personally. Mm. I am quite connected, I feel, to the staffy girls like Shadow, Miss Red and Miss Violet. And at the time, um, I wanted what was best for Miss Red especially, because she was the one in question. Um, and in the end, I, I couldn't say goodbye to her. <laughs> she, um, she loved her sister so much. And, you know, I just worried for her. So I feel like that one was quite an emotional decision on my behalf. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> um, so then we ended up with 10. 10? Miss Red and Miss Violet. We I had eight. We're, I thought we were at nine before. No, we were at eight. Eight, right, yeah. okay. Um, 
And then I don't know who was next, whether it was Shadow or Barney. But um, I mean, let's just let's just say it was Shadow because we're going yeah. off. Um, you know, I'm not sure. Yeah. I think I think on paper um, we actually told everybody. <laughs> Chop, saying hi. Um, about Shadow and Barney at the same time. I remember that video. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember too. Um, double. So let's just talk about Shadow. Um, now, Shadow's behaviour. I don't know. Because they're talking to Amro and he doesn't know. Does yeah, he? I don't know what they're asking though. Are they just general chit chatting or like. Maybe. There's nothing going on up there. Okay, sorry. Sorry, everybody. Um, we just got some tradies here at the moment. And that's why Finally, we're here to service the cameras. So we got some tradies here, and that's why we're in the playground with all the dogs. Because um, they're doing work around the house and um, with the security system. Um, anyway, so Shadow, behaviorally. Oh. Uh, she was, oh, she was serious, wasn't she? Um, yeah, but not the typical serious. The typical serious is, you know, a dominant dog that met another dominant dog and they wanted to be the top dog and then they'd fight it out. Like, that's the typical aggressive dog, you know? Yeah, like Freddo. Yeah. Um, Freddo, Roscoe, Chance, you know, all those guys. Mm. That's the typical way that it goes. <coughs> Shadow was very different, and I'd never seen a dog like this before. She would totally be accepting of strong, confident dogs and would just be like, yep, I'm a normal dog. But then she would see a dog that would just be no, no malice whatsoever, no... Um, mm. You know, objective she'd, she'd at want all. to rip apart the weak ones. Yeah, but then she'd just want to go for the jugular on dogs yeah. that had nothing to do with it. No. Because your experience um, was mostly dominant um, dogs, aggressive dogs. Like it was often males. Mm. You know, typi typical aggression story. Yeah. Um, but then Shadow came in, and her target was um, all, all the soft targets. Any, yeah. Any dog showing any. Um, just mm. it was it, it wasn't even dogs showing submission that like sometimes you can see dogs that show submission and blah blah, blah they get picked on it wasn't even that it, she was just picking the weakest dogs in the group mm. and she just wanted to and really straight for their neck wanted and... to go for them yeah like yeah. really and I remember just thinking and so what she... is happening here what, so... what is she going after here and that's what made us realize where she's come from so she um she required quite a lot of training oh, yeah. um and then even after all of the training um <clears throat> there was still a lot of concern with her going um out um into the world wasn't it oh yeah we we'd had some reports from some owners um from some of the original dogs like freddo's um generation mm. that um oh. You know, some of the owners, like, you know, they don't, they didn't have the time. They weren't putting in the effort and, um, you know, some of the dogs had regressed. Um, a dog like Shadow. Regressing. That, that would be a big problem. Yeah. So we were a little, you know, like the, we're sharing with everybody our journey of like figuring everything out. Mm. And so... We'd have, we'd, we had just had yeah. some experience where um, some of the owners weren't carrying through with the training and, um, you know, we were feeling a bit like, oh, goodness, this, is, this isn't good, you yeah. know. And then Shadow comes into our life and she's gone through the training, but she's still requiring um, she, a lot of supervision and she needed, between you and Jason. Yeah. But she um, also needed a lot of... Um, ongoing continual training like even after the training phase had finished yeah she needed a lot of guidance yeah and we were very concerned that she wouldn't get the right guidance and therefore find herself in trouble again so for shadow's sake we adopted her 
Yeah, because you have to understand, like, maybe from our perspective, you know, when we are um, say, telling everybody, hey, this dog's up for adoption, mm. we're really putting our, I don't want to say we're putting our name to it. We don't mean it in that way that, um, you know, oh, it's our reputation. That is absolutely not what we're thinking. It is our, I'm talking about it more that it's our responsibility. You know and so um, we don't we never push an adoption unless we feel like the dog is yeah. ready and we feel that um, someone out there yeah. can take this dog on so um, back in the beginning when we used to do the Abra is a really good example of that yeah. you know um, we have not pushed her adoption because she's a dog that we feel you know that um, responsibly we we couldn't just send her out at this point, you know. So with Shadow, that was our first real feeling of, oh, goodness, is this going to be um, something that we regret, um, you know, six to 12 months down the track, that, goodness, we really should have just kept that dog. Um, she's done some damage and, you know, that this is genuinely how we felt, wasn't yeah. it? So we adopted Shadow and we did say on the video that this is kind of the reason why we're doing it. Like we don't feel like, you know, we can 100% trust her. Isn't that right? Yeah. Um, and you couldn't. And someone would we, have fallen still, in love with her. We still can't. No. Someone She's, would have fallen in love with her and just trusted her oh, that one time too much. and then, bad. And, um, and, uh, and just loved her to death because she's such a real smoochy girl. We know, we feel like we know exactly how it would have gone. And um, that kind of relationship for her, if it's only that, um, is where she would slip up. And um, she would hurt another, another dog. And it would never be an equal match. It, it would always be. She'd always pick someone that she could hands down wipe the floor. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that brought us to 11. <laughs> oh, I stopped counting. <laughs> Pretty sure that's where we're at. I've run out of fingers. And then on the same video, we adopted Barney. So Barney came into our life from Boxer Rescue Network Australia and um, from the beautiful um, uh, Dagmar. Dagmar. And Dagmar is, you know, such a fan of the breed such a fan of the breed really dedicated really has one objective and that is the welfare of the dogs that she's absolutely so does a very very good job runs a very clean operation oh, and con she, contacted us yeah and she's said, an awesome lady yeah, so contact us about barney this little puppy <laughs> who's had operations on his butthole already what two yeah and and she had fundraised um with her um community to pay for all of barney's two, surgeries two surgeries at seven and a half grand each as a young like three to four month old puppy and so therefore had missed out on any sort of socialization any sort of real you know things. he was pushed around in a pram because he wasn't um, allowed to yeah to that to that extent yeah. so um you know he had some obviously he he had some behavioral issues but that wasn't the thing with um barney coming to the farm he was coming here for some socialization yeah. so but as you can imagine a purebred puppy boxer dagma got hundreds of applications and yep. then the very first thing she would say is you read the application you understand that you know, this is a fecally incontinent boxer that will never improve. And it so will always be. their reply was always, yes, but he will get better, won't he? Or he'll yeah. outgrow this or he'll recover. Yeah. And Dagmar said, no, this is for life. You must understand this. And all 150 applicants supposedly then out. weren't suitable. Yeah. Um, so she wanted him to come here and um, from day one, she wanted us to adopt Barney. Yeah, there was there was definitely <laughs> in our minds. We were convinced though that um, someone's gonna adopt this boy. Yeah, you know, they're gonna see like he is a boxer puppy, and 
We, I mean, he did have behavioural issues when he came here. Like, he hadn't been socialised. That was standard. And... We've had boxes before. Exactly. We knew exactly what was so, going on. So, you know, but we really did think that someone would... Adopt him. Adopt him. But mm. then I guess we kind of, you know, fostering him, we did realise the responsibility um, uh, we yeah. done. So, the first night... We put a nappy on him and, you know, left him on the lounge. And we had all our fresh washing folded. You always tell this story. Behind it. <laughs> and I remember waking up and going, oh, Barney's, this was, Barney's chewed his nappy off. This was totally our fault because we were just inexperienced when it came to Barney. having a dog that was fecally incontinent. Yeah. Like, we didn't realise how you know much the nappy had to stay on and you know like it we just we're just figuring it out we were novices at we it didn't know. um yeah. you know so but um he'd successfully dropped parcels on mm. at least 12 items of clothing all over the couch all over the like where he'd just been walking over the lot yeah of it. it was just falling out now, we continued to help Dagmar because everyone might remember that Bailey came along to the farm yeah. and also, um, obviously, Maggie did. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so we were continuing to help her um, train and socialise and, and um, seek adoption for mm -hmm. these dogs that were struggling. The ones that were coming to us were ones that weren't finding their homes um, through the usual yeah. means of... Um, you know, uh, social media, media posting and sharing and all of that. Um, but every time we spoke to Dagma, she was pushing me to <laughs> convince you to keep Barney. She used to, she used to call me, <laughs> and then ask to speak to you, and then ask for you to walk away from me. <laughs> yeah. On the phone. She was so funny. In the end, I mean, it had been a little, uh, quite some, you know, a few months, and I just said, oh, I'll talk to Luke, I'll talk to Luke. <laughs> yeah. But she never asked me. <laughs> Not once. Oh, she's a smart lady. Yeah. She just asked me. I was like, okay. What's one more, you know? Yeah, um, but there's, like, I probably would have been like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Which <laughs> did this big long winded behind the back thing. Luke's a big softy deep down. Um, usually you've asked to help. He's like, okay. Um, anyway, so we adopted Barney. So what was, did I just count Barney? Was Barney 11 or was he 12? Now I am confused. No, I think, I think that's 12 now. That's 12. Yeah, okay. And then very shortly after that, um, Maggie came along. Um... And Maggie was a similar situation to Barney mm. in that she was this really sweet, petite, you know, white boxer, you know, had a lot of application, actually had a lot of meet and greets, um, and, but they all didn't work out because she was quite... She's completely deaf. <laughs> but she was reactive in those meet and greets when meeting other dogs. Well, she's not had any training. She's been... But she... But that's you know. also that is very much Maggie. Just on just on the get go, you know, like you know, if she just meets a dog for the first time, she can be a bit in your face yeah, and she's put in, other she, dogs she's off. She's in your face, but the thing with Maggie is, she doesn't have a bad bone in her body mm. until <laughs> another dog crosses just her. Check it. Yeah. So, oh, and then it is on. Yeah. So then, <laughs> so she just doesn't let things slide. So she'll be like. Hi, hi, how are you? Hi. And right you're in like, your face. You're like, give and me then, some space. And you're like, what? Stuff you. I'm just being nice. Yeah. You know? So the other dog, dogs would have likely said, you Leave know, alone. hey, get crazy. out of my face. And then she would have just gone, what? Smack down. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. I remember the first time um, she grabbed something. I can't remember what it was. It was like a, it was like a piece of rubbish off the bench, and I grabbed it out of her mouth, and I saw the lip curl, and I was like, oh, I see what's going on here, 
And I remember like testing her out a few times after that. And um, any time I'd go to snatch something off her, she would sit there and go like this. I was like, oh, okay. We got some chewed here, girl. <laughs> she's she's a little bit feisty. Yeah, she's a feisty um, one. But yeah. Um, but on both Maggie and Barney, um, being boxers, they are such social dogs, aren't they? Oh yeah. And so they both have um, very much thrived in the pack environment. And, well, that was um, part of Maggie's, you know, beautiful existence was the fact that she, you didn't, like, she was completely deaf. So if she was your only dog, she's gone, mm. you know. But we had a pack of dogs at that stage that you just had to call the pack back and she would see the pack turn and come back. So she'd follow. Yeah. So she could be managed that way. But then... Well, we had through, lots of things going on that helped her. her. Like, yeah. it's fully fenced. She can't go anywhere. So Because right. at that time, she had no recall no, whatsoever. None whatsoever. Um, and, but we had to train her to look at us, to give hand signals and all sorts of things. But she, she did become a bit of a problem if rough play got a bit too rough. Yeah, so it's just, it's getting her attention. Um, and see, now there are, yeah, there's rules around electronic cl collars here in Australia in different states. Because I remember Dagma said, would it help if she had That's right, because they're from collar. Queensland and New South Wales, they're illegal. Dif different rules. Um, but that's okay, like, you know, oh, goodness. She's done fine now, she's perfect. I mean, but also even in this environment, there's just really... Um, there's nothing she can do to hurt herself. No. You know, she's fine. She's yeah. just going to hit the fence at the other end and mm -hmm. come back. Like, it wasn't a problem. Yeah. So, um, now, Maggie, along with many many members of our pack like i'm talking miss red miss violet barney you know hope um oh goodness i could go on uh shadow they are dogs that we have genuinely felt like um they thrive here mm. in this environment um and so we just thought hey what is one more yeah <laughs> what's one more that's one more let's do it so I think we're up to 12 at that point. Yeah. No, he was 12. Oh, he was 12. So what are we up to? 13. 13. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think that that is where maybe... Lily? Oh, we've done Lily ages ago. Yeah. She was number eight after Fredo. Um, I think at this point is when the four dogs arrived on our doorstep and that changed everything forever. Mm. <laughs> so that was Chance, Roscoe, Nevaeh, uh, Nevaeh and Molly. And Molly. Um, we were, we had the day before that day, um, we were running daycare as per normal, our whole business. We did not know that they were coming. Mm -hmm. We had no um, forewarning. Oh, it's the ants. Yeah, that's um, it was an emergency situation and uh, we didn't even know how many there were or anything. They just literally turned up on yeah. our doorstep. Um, and yeah, it changed our life forever, didn't it? That Yeah. Um, now, ever since then, I have to be honest, it's been very difficult. You know, not not those four dogs' fault or anybody's no. fault, um, but for us personally, um, you know, even with those eight dogs and running our business, we were in a really great position, weren't we? You know, we were running daycare, we had boarding and training, and you know, yeah. yes, it had changed since COVID, definitely, but um, you know we put in place some measures to kind of compensate those losses with YouTube, you know, having our online and training course. Um, and then these four dogs arrived. Oh, I knew he was going to do that. What is it? Roscoe jumped oh, the fence shit. to go see those tradies. Oh no. Roscoe! Okay, he's 
jumping the fence back over now. Here he comes. Well, he didn't eat them. Yeah. That's a good they, they must have got, uh, they disappeared though. They They're must probably have gone hiding in, um, oh, watch out, Freddo. I'm not sure if mate. that's still pointing at us or not. Good boy. Good boy, oh. mate. Oh, 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 oh. Good boy, oh, oh. buddy. Good job. Yeah, quite. Jelly. We're talking about you now, buddy. Yeah, we are. Yeah, that's when you came to the farm, mate. Don't, don't eat our tradies, okay? Please. Much obliged. Hello, mate. Um... So... Silly. Come on. So Leave straight away, with those four coming, um... I'll be honest, and we didn't know what we were doing. You know, we didn't know how we were going to help them. Like they were just here because they were going to be euthanized. We didn't know how, what we kind of plan. We didn't have space for them. Like they, um, D had um, delivered some um, like country outdoor kennels to us um, to put them in because obviously we couldn't use those apartments because these dogs could not be with any other dog in any situation. Um, so they had to be caged um, in out, outside. It was just... Yeah, it was really, really bad. They had to be exercised individually. They couldn't even, they couldn't even be out on lead 50 meters away from the other one. So where were we? So, it's 24 hours later. Yeah, we had a little intermission there, didn't we? So we, um, we kept talking for a bit, but um, the... Camera turned off. The camera had turned off. It, obviously, the battery had run out. I did keep checking, but um, we might have missed about 10 minutes or so before we realised. Yeah. Um, so, instead of um, continuing to film the rest of it in the evening, which we were going to we planned do, on it, yeah. we decided to just have the night off and um, continue the rest of it today. Yeah. So we got, we got as far as um, the four dogs, Chance, Roscoe, Nevaeh and Molly arriving at the farm. Right. Yeah. So, um, We're just sitting Thanks, down, buddy. hanging out. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Um. <laughs> so. Hello. Oh, who's whacking me in the head with the tail? So. Hello, Rosie. Hello. Oh. Oh. Hello, Hope you do. Oh, Hope's going on top of you there, Roscoe. <laughs> hey. Banjo, it's you, is it, mate? It's you, Banjo. You got a new hat on? You have a hat, mate. Got destroyed yesterday. <laughs> By Joey. <laughs> we, thought, we thought it was okay, but it didn't... Um, nah, it didn't last. It didn't last. Ripped the guts out of it. So you're going with the black one. That's a different one, isn't it? This is my dress hat. I really like the black one. Mm. Maybe I'll adopt a black one for winter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Something different, isn't it? 
Um, oh, hello, shop. Just soaking wet, mate. You've been duck diving for that ball. Already. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hey, boys. So, oh. in 24, what has it been? 24 hours, almost. Exactly. Everything seems fine. No longer got any um, ringworm or anything. Ringworm so coming she got up. Because yeah. we did treat her straight away, didn't we? Yeah. Because um, she had. It did, did look like perhaps yeah. above her eye was um, starting there, and then she got a lump on her back, and after the medication, it all disappeared. It just disappeared yeah. so we still took her to the vet just to make sure, but. Well, it was supposed to be the kittens. The kittens um, had that appointment, didn't they? That appointment, yeah, yeah. but. They've all gone back, so we've we have just kept it and it's taken Kitty Rose just to be safe. She did a general checkup; everything looks good. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's well fed, though. Um. Hear that, Sam? She's well fed. She's they well say fed. that. Was that the feedback? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a polite way of saying too much food. Okay. <laughs> There's a little chart. I just um, I just thought she doesn't eat that much at all. The only thing I can think of is that she does get into something maybe and. Oh, oh she does go to know. all the other bowls. <laughs> oh, oh, how, how hard could it be to um? Just do a video. Just do a video. Oh, 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 oh you buddy. Um. Right, man. Right about, mate. Know, Cruiser and Tank are not getting along in, in this 24 hour period. No. Uh, if we were to update on any yeah, behavioural cru developments. Cruiser has been a bit of a bully to Tank right from the beginning. Cause, yeah. Because Tank. We, we've is kind so of told soft. everybody about that along the way from the beginning. Yeah. You know? And just the reasoning on that one again is. Tank. Why is Tank yeah, targeted? Well, he's just a real gentle boy. <laughs> so, uh, and he's always wanting to, you know, suck up to the other dogs. He's not trying to dominate them. He's not trying not to no be agenda. tough. And Cruz has just seen it as a weakness and he's come in, nipped him a few times in the hindquarters before we did that um, two week session with Cruiser. Mm. But it seems like Cruiser's going really well with all the other dogs. Yeah. He's no longer nipping them. He's Definitely. running along playing. Like there was a massive improvement. Yeah. But uh, the tank and cruiser thing is still it there. Hasn't, it hasn't solved it. So basically cruiser's just coming along and every now and again giving tank a little nip in the bum or on the tail. There on yeah, I'm watching, yeah. But see the difference there? Yeah. yeah. Fredo's him. Yeah, Fredo's like, oh yeah, you know, you're up to me. Good boy, Fredo. Um, so, that's, that's that one. And so, it, what does that mean? It just means it's... Um, well, we got to really watch that now. It's a developing yeah. uh, relationship. Uh, generally, that means that um, you've got to really keep your eye on it, don't you? Yeah. And um, manage the interaction. If it gets really bad, I'll have to. Just me and those two go into a room together. We're not coming out until it's fixed. <laughs> Cut it out. Rover. Rover's getting old. Yeah, I don't That's know what's okay. going on with you, mate. Why are you growling today? Hello, Rosie. Hello, Rosie girl. Um, oh, sweet okay. Rosie. So, Hello. Oh, you hi. Hi. We, Hello. The, bit, the bit that got cut out. Hello. Um, Hello. No, no plank. We no were plank. talking very honestly, no. weren't we, about. Um, oh, oh, good girl. That time, like when the four arrived. Yeah. Um, that, was a, that was a tough time. Yeah. Um, if we were to be like really, really honest, um, 
we were not prepared in any way for those four arriving at that time. You know, just no. just quickly to reiterate, because I'm sure that it is at the um, on the other video, but you know, we were still running daycare and you know boarding and training and um, and then these four arrived with no notice. Um, and we knew nothing about it. And, and there wasn't even a heads up about any history with the dogs. No, and we didn't even really know. Like what, how severe were their problems? And, or? and was it something like, oh, we'll just, you know, we just need these dogs to kind of be here for a few weeks, you know, like, um, you know, or even from a training perspective. You know, is this like something that's going to take a couple of months? Is this something, you know, yeah. not in our wildest dreams did we think that it was going to be yeah. like from start to finish a 12 month process and we'd have to shut uh, the business down. Um, but even um, even a couple of little things where, and I'm not, I'm not saying this to, you know, have a go at the shelter at all, but, you know, it was left to me to figure out what what the dynamic is and then afterwards be like oh yeah these guys hate each other like mm. i don't know why but they have got a real thing for each other and then they're oh yeah we tested them before and they had a fight and i was like why don't, why don't you tell me this stuff like i could have been prepared yeah so it was a little bit disjointed that way like because when they dropped them off whoever dropped them off had no idea about them but there was no message to pass on you know so we had to work it all out the hard way and it was very, very serious. So um, those four dogs. No, no. Um, Chance, Nevaeh, Roscoe and Molly, um, they were coming to a place that was free range, yeah. you know, and that... Um, but they couldn't be with any other dog, not one other dog at that time. And so they um, de-trucked uh, over some like country outdoor kennels so that they could be caged individually up the back. Um, now I gotta say, that's not how we run anything mm. here. Um, we made a, a very, strong choice like um just early on uh, like why we started the farm was so that um and all the things that we put in place was so that dogs could just freely um live, live their life here at the farm as like, if it was their farm it was that their was, farm was everyone the was idea. in together um yeah. there was no separation that was our big thing like and we chose to do this and to put in the extra work so that it was um achievable yeah so i'm saying this because having those dogs in those cages up the back living here was very depressing for us um we really personally struggled with it um every single day um i think what got missed is you you know getting up at three o'clock in the morning to, yeah um, so I, I would get up at three o'clock in the morning go up the back train all four of them one at a time in the dark um and then leave at what 4 30 uh, to go to drive into Sydney to pick up the dogs for daycare because I knew that they just are not going to get out. They of that wouldn't cage get out at all for the rest of the day. You know? and then you would return at um, 9 p.m. Um, yeah. that evening. So they were spending all day in that tiny cage. It was so awful. It was, it was and the really... only thing that we could tell ourselves was, well, if they're not there, then they're just going to be put to sleep. Yeah. In hindsight, it's all worked out. You know, in hindsight, it was a short period of their life that they had to live in those conditions and then now they're living their best life. So we can look back on it and say, you know, great, we got there. But Chance took 12 months before he was adopted. So he, he spent a lot of time in isolation for a very big rehab. And even once we moved from those kennels to those rooms, there was still a period of time where we shut down the daycare. Uh, no, sorry, we'd lost we'd lost a lot of staff support for a number of reasons. 
you know, um, and that's when it went to, okay, what are we doing here? Well, we just, um, the reason that I was saying, sharing how difficult it was living like that with the dogs up the back is because when we got to that point of, we can't keep doing this. No. We're, you know, these dogs are living a terrible life. Can I just say that? And we just... Well, there was, it was no never... different to being at the shelter. Like, they're just living in a cage. Yeah. And, um, you know... Like, yeah, sure, they got to get out and go for a run for 15 minutes, 20 minutes. But it had to be spread out between all four. Mm. You know, uh, I couldn't have any staff do it because they were too crazy you know they're yeah. really aggressive oh, they were you know like they were labeled as dog aggressive but we okay. all know now that roscoe cannot be um like anybody knew you know like he he still to this day is um managed in terms of new people coming to the farm um chance had uh, handler aggression, you know, referred aggression. Yeah. Um, so, so there's no way we could have anybody go in there other than you. Um, and so this is where it all started, didn't it? In in the sense of um, we had to make some decisions. How can we keep? How yeah. can we keep um, the business going? We. And there's, there's no no one was going to um, come and help us out. Like no one was going to come in and say, "Oh, I'll, I'll adopt these dogs," or "Hey, guys, I'm a rescue and I'll take on those four dogs." Um, you know, it was it was just left to us. Um, and in our minds, we genuinely felt we had no other choice than to shut the business down and help these dogs. Yeah. And so that's that's what we did. Well, the only other choice was to hand the dogs back and then they would just be euthanized. So that's yeah. not an option for us. You no. Know, we, we would never do that. So, so we really, no really other feel option. like our hands were tied. Like we do not see, I can't see any other option here, you know. Um, so, you know, it was, it, it was just a, we were stuck between a rock and a hard place. There was no two ways about it. And it had nothing to do with the driving. Like the driving obviously added another stress to it, didn't it? But, but the, it was the it, the, the driving. The driving was only the fact that I could be training instead of driving. That's right. But know? the dogs couldn't be a part of daycare oh, or no. any other time of the day. No, no like way. they were still in that position. So we had no to way. change the way that the farm was run. You know, it couldn't be free range anymore. The focus needed to go to training and rehab. You know. Um, at that yeah. time, to we, get these guys, you know, we weighed up our options for who are the dogs that are going to miss out the most from one decision to the other. Mm. And at the end of the day, all of our clients' dogs okay. were very well looked after, had a loving home. You know, yeah, yeah. sure, they didn't get to visit the farm anymore, but they're still going to live the mm. best life. Mm. You know, uh, but if we went the other way, oh, hello. Mate. If we went the other way, no one was caring for these dogs. No one's putting in the time. No. You know, they would have just disappeared into the system and been gone forever. Yeah. So we just couldn't make that decision. And, you know, uh, we decided to commit to those guys. And, yeah. you know, looking back, we're so glad that we did. Absolutely. Because... Like, I mean, I, I am... Oh, you know, I still get a little bit emotional and... Um, about it but yeah it was just a really tough time like yeah. we were falling apart personally but even even um, like it was putting oh, such Freddy, you're hurting me buddy it was putting such a depressing um, like we felt really down about the fact that we couldn't do more for these dogs with the amount of workload that we had on and we didn't have the facility to give them a more comfortable um, you know accommodation and it really took a toll on our relationship and family life didn't it? Yeah, it sure did. So it, it affected a, a whole range of elements in our life It was a tough time, definitely. Um, so, you know, 
know, Molly got adopted. Um, now that then brings us to, um, and everyone knows the story of Nevea and Chance. Um, but it brings us to number possibly 14, I think. Oh gee, what numbers are we up to? Roscoe. Yeah, maybe. Is it? I'm pretty sure that sounds right. 14, eh? Um, so Roscoe, now... I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back to when, um, you know, it was that period of adopting Roscoe. Yeah. And um, the thought process behind that one. Hey. Um, okay, Roscoe. Roscoe. Mm -hmm. So, you want to talk about Roscoe? Where do we start? <laughs> well, ever it's, uh, those that have followed us for a while, will probably remember um, Roscoe creating um, a job for himself and a spot in the pack. Um, yeah, we, we, we didn't know how it was going to go when we moved Roscoe from the accommodation up the back to the house yard and to the rest of the pack. And at that stage, we, had, um, we hadn't really thought about adopting him it was just part of his progression and his rehabilitation and he came to the house and joined the rest of the pack mm. but he very quickly said to himself i love this yeah and then he thought you guys are all x y and z what you're missing is a uh, this yeah. and he just went that's me i'm born for this role yeah you know and started to prove his worth to the pack Whenever there were intruders, visitors, Protecting tradesmen, the children. he would just, Fredo would run and bark at the gate and Roscoe would stay silent and sit in front of the closest human and to put his body on the line. And then any, if they came close, he would stand up and bark very defensively, but hold his ground in front of either Wolfie or Evie or myself or you, so that he was saying, these are my humans, stay away. Now, straight away, for him to take that on and to, um, you know, put himself in a position where he could see a, a, you know, a vacuum there that we needed. Hello, mate, you want some kisses? You want some kisses, but oh, I was trying to talk around him, he wasn't happy with it. Um, so I think there was a few things going on as to why we adopted Roscoe. Yeah. Like I feel like he was telling us that, yeah. and um, and then on that note, um, we'd had a, we had had an experience with another dog previous to Roscoe, who mm. had done a similar thing, and yeah. um, we were strict on having this dog, you know, adopted out. And um, despite the fact that he made it very clear that he wanted to stay, um, and it was something that we a little bit regretted. Yeah, I'd agree. If, if I can be honest. Yeah. Um, and um, the reasons that. We won't, we won't talk about... No, but um, it was just one of those things where we're like, is this going to be another case of this? And then, you know, we thought about, okay, what, so how do, do we feel, feel about it? And, and I, you know, I always form a really strong connection with all the dogs that we rehab. And yeah. so, you know... I think that's the downfall um, of this whole um, yeah. process for us and why things have changed in our minds regards to yeah. what are we doing here because it works and it doesn't work yeah you know um you're just opening just the gates the gate for some for the pool, tradies yeah. um wind's about to come through very gusty today. Um, so quickly, um, so 
Um, it, it, so your type of training is relationship based. So there's always going to be that at the end of it, um, you know, and for certain dogs, uh, like say for instance, Roscoe, um, where that relationship means so much yeah. that, um, you know, it's not going to work in the end. Like the relationship based training, I mean, as in the training works, like the dogs, you know, get big, but, um, the relationship is just too strong, um, you know, for some dogs in particular. Um, but even 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 that, you know, Ro Ros I know what Roscoe was like to start with, and I know how hard he was to yeah. break through. He he's definitely a dog that you would not put, even though he's been rehabilitated, you would not put with. Any, like 90% of people. No, you know? and so that was what I was going to also say is that um, people do need to understand that we are given um, these dogs that are struggling to get adopted or those four were on death row. Yeah. You know, they were supposed to be euthanized and so yeah. they just needed to get out of there so that council wouldn't do it. Um, so we're talking about... Um, dogs with a serious history you know behind them so when we get to that point where it's like okay do we adopt them out or not um, sometimes we can feel like um, can we actually rehome this dog you know like and so for instance Roscoe because the bond and the relationship was so strong we genuinely thought he would go downhill and go backwards being rehomed because he loved you so yeah. much um, and you know a similar thing happened uh, with another dog and we regret that that happened mm. you know so um, you know, I think that a little bit was like, we're not going to let that happen to Roscoe. Um, so Roscoe's number 14. We haven't really been talking about how this has been, like each one, how it then affects the pack, but goodness, it's just so much, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it, it really is. Like, if you think about anyone, everyone out there has had, you know, one dog before and then introduced another dog and seen how it has changed the pack and the relationship. Hey Joey. Hey darling. Oh yeah, good beer. Hello darling. Hey Tatil. Hey Tilly. Good girls. Good girls. Someone just called in, but yeah, so we were going to talk about how each dog coming into the pack then affected the dynamic. Um, I mean, obviously, Roscoe had um, quite a significant impact on yeah. the pack. Um, you know, up until then, it was Fredo who was the big boy, you know, the big male in the pack. And, I know that a lot of people were worried about how that was going to work, like Fredo and Roscoe together. You know, can you have hat, two big males? It's a brand new hat. Can't take it. Um, Can't take it. But it ended up working, didn't it? Yeah, look, it was always a big concern that, you know, that those two would butt heads. Abra! Abra! Good Dog. girl, darling. Dogs are a bit crazy today. Yeah, we got people coming and going. Yeah. Abra. Good girl. So who's after Roscoe? Well, we haven't finished talking about the dynamic shift. Yeah, okay. Shift well, you, you go. You talk about that. The power shift and the dynamic change when Roscoe entered was significant 
for everyone involved, four-legged and two-legged. Mm. Because he's the first dog that's come in as a very vocal dog. Mm. Most dogs, when they're being vocal, it means they're oh, it is. pissed it, off. Look, it's or... the kids. Ah, oh, it was. Yeah, okay. So I've just shut the gate on them. I and thought... I have a very short period of window of time, yeah? Yeah, okay. Hopefully there's no more interruptions. Uh, the dogs didn't know how to take Roscoe. Mm. You know, they had to learn his language as well. And so too did the humans other than you. That's you know, right. Like it, he did intimidate a lot of people. Even me. Yeah, you know, I was, I would see him like growling and rah, 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 all the time and I'd be like, oh gee, what's he saying? Yeah, and even but his "I'm gonna eat you" growl sounds like, and his "Oh, I'm so happy to see you" growl sounds like. There's these subtle differences. Did you hear it? <laughs> Not many people can pick it up, but I could I could read it, and uh, I remember your mum used to call him the mafia mafia dog because she'd just look at him. She was terrified. He's, of he's, him. he's gonna kill someone. Yeah. He was just like... He, he just joked about how yeah. he was going to eat her and, you know. And uh, I remember one time I had a friend over. That no, was my brother. I had my brother over. And Roscoe came out and rubbed up against his shoulder and looked up at him. Like rubbed his shoulder on ben, uh, Seamus's leg and looked up at him and growled and Seamus was like... Man, this dog's growling right next to my crutch. What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I used to stir him up. I'm like, don't move, mate. Don't make any sudden movements. He's in your sights. You're in his sights. You're sight. in his sights, sorry. Yeah, he was freaking out. <laughs> oh, dear. There's so much going on over here at the moment. Yeah, it's just too much movement happening. Mm. About five different cars coming and going. Fredo's running up and down the fence line, like, saying, yeah. what are you doing in my house? It's just getting everyone going. There's a bit of unrest. Um, okay, so, Roscoe. Right. And then, um, there are a lot of dogs that came and went, you know, um, There's a, there was a few dogs that came in between that time, but we are just talking about our pack. Yeah, just our dogs, yeah. Um, so, would, would we be up to Tank and Chopper? Tank and Chopper and Hope, because they were all at the one time that we adopted them officially. But Hope yeah, had but been Hope, there for a while. Hope came first. Yeah. So Hope obviously came in. so severely shut down and withdrawn and just terrified of everything. It took weeks and weeks and weeks just to get them to uh, come with us without a lead. Remember? They would just drop or run and shiver and cry or just absolutely terrified. So, yeah, but I remember very quickly, or maybe I've just Still slow going, and obviously, that, uh, not long after, you know, we discovered that Faith had a pretty aggressive um, cancer in her mammary glands, and was starting to show signs of struggling. And straight away, we just booked an emergency appointment as soon as we noticed, and um, sure enough, it was diagnosed as very severe and um, yeah not much not much of a 
life expectancy. Oh, I was really sad. She was yeah. only four years old, and she'd lived her whole life in a terrible situ, you know, like a, abusive like a battery, um, situation. A battery puppy farm. Yeah, um, and you know, and then she came here and she finally made it out of there. Finally made it out of there, and we were we were taking the approach of not um, pressuring them forcing them to do anything, yeah. just letting them, you know, decompress and just follow the pack um, and, you know, have human contact at their own will, yeah. like, you know, when ready and... And just, um, just be comfortable. Yep, no Stress pressure free. on getting adopted or leaving here or even performing or, you know, anything like, you know, um, but I don't know how long it was after they arrived but um you know we discovered that faith had a very aggressive um, mammary uh, cancer and which ultimately took her life before she passed we adopted her we adopted her um, you know just to give her that peace that she finally made it you know yeah otherwise she would have you know she would have died like as if she didn't have a family and you know, we were her family, yeah. and her daughter, you know, Hope is here with her. Um, yeah, so that kind of brought us to Hope, and basically, once that happened, we we're like, well. Well, then, then it was very much, um, you know, because we felt like Hope, Hope. There were a few people that were interested in Hope. There was. And um, no one actually um, went through with any application. We say that they inquired, but nothing was formal. Um, You know, but we, you know, we weren't pushing anything because we thought, let's just give her the time firstly to be with her mum in these, you know, last weeks. Yeah. And then after the fa- after her passing, it was that um, we really felt like she needed the pack. Um, you Hope know, did for, for her yeah, healing and her moving That's right. Forward. Like if we were to um, really push the adoption and move her on at that there point, been, it just didn't yeah. seem right. No. Um, and then I know that by Christmas time, we... Um, we made a decision that um, she definitely wasn't ready yet to be rehomed or adopted out. Um, and so we felt like it could be another 12 months before she's at a point where, um, you know, she's, you know, trusting and, mm. you know, she's had a little bit of training Matilda. under her belt. Got it out. Um, and so... Yeah. We just decided that she's a dog that um, probably needs to just stay on, have no more interruptions in her yeah. life, you know, only go just forwards li- and just, upwards. Just and live your life. Be, be at peace, you know, and feel like you know your home, you know your pack, you know your humans, yeah. you know, and um, she just had too much trauma. Yeah, uh, why go through anymore? Why bother? Like, we didn't have to. We can just adopt her, so... And she doesn't have to. You know, that's how we kind of mm. think, you know? People might think that we're not very forward-thinking, you know, in terms of, like, business decisions or, you know, like, we're setting down on this path and we make a lot of... Um, deviations. Deviations. But it usually is because, oh, well, the dogs need this now. Yeah. You know? Like, so, yeah, because some people, like, question what we're doing, you know, and, um, you know, we we get pressure from both sides. We get pressure to adopt dogs and cats, you know, Um, why, you know, that you should adopt that dog or you should adopt that cat. And then we get pressure to take on more dogs at any time. And then we get pressure on to, um, to not adopt and to um to have more dogs come through um and i don't know why (laughs) well the thing is you can't please everyone no but i mean we're we're living our life yeah we're literally just a we're trying to provide the best possible 
possible life we can for these dogs. But just the dogs that come into our life, yeah. you know, that come into our care, like we make a decision that we feel is best for them. Um, and, you know, mm. and then we are doing the best possible job that we can do, uh, that, or that we're able to provide, um, you know, in caring for them and loving them. Um, but, yeah, Hope was definitely one of those ones, you know, a bit like Miss Violet and, um, you know, quite a few members, to be honest, um, you know, where we just feel like they're safe here, you know, why disrupt that? And um, they love their life and yeah. they've been through enough. They don't need to go through anymore. Um, so then there's Tank and Chopper. So I think we're, we're up to 15, but sad, no, oh, sorry, 15 with hope. Would have been 16, but. Chopper's doing on one of our shelter dog days. He just decided he wasn't going back to the shelter. Um, and in all honesty, we truly felt that um, they wouldn't be with us for very long. Uh, you know, that no they way. would definitely get adopted. Um, they were such good looking dogs. They were still young puppies. There's no way. Really sweet. There's no way we thought that they would not get any applications. No yeah. way. Mm -hmm. I honestly, I honestly thought it was going to be a case of yeah, we'll leave them here, and then four days later they'll call us and say absolutely. someone's coming to get them. Absolutely, we we genuinely did feel that. But you know what? That was back when we still thought that um, when dogs came to the farm that they still had a chance of being adopted out. I've got to say that we're not really at that point anymore. We feel like um, when dogs come to the farm, it's a little unlikely that um, any, you know. Yeah, I'm not really not sure. Not unlikely, but I don't know. There's this. There's a lot of stuff that's going on. You know, like we are trying to provide the best life we can for them. But I do feel um, that people might look at that and think, well, those dogs are okay. You know, I'm gonna um, adopt a dog at the shelter. That, that's what I was know? thinking. And, so I, I think, and that is totally reasonable. I think we've isn't it? developed you know? a bit of a reputation for, you know, if nobody adopts these dogs, we're that, just gonna adopt them. That's so right. So they're gonna live their best life. I'll, I'll help another dog. Yeah. So then you know? we can we can fully understand and appreciate that that Look, view. Look, it, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But the problem for us is it means we're no longer able to help more dogs well it's more the serious ones you know that um like we've got that many dogs here now that we need to look after and i hold very um firm on the promises that i made to these guys which was providing the best life possible now if we were to add another 10 dogs to this pack the quality of life that they live would be depleted across the whole pack because there'd be, you know, all sorts of issues associated with increasing the pack further to what it already is. Yeah. Um, and well, it's, we and it's only... not what we wanted to do in the first place, as in we want to give them the best possible life. We want to give them the ultimate freedom. But already we can see just by introducing the last couple of dogs, uh, there's been, sig you know, significant dynamic shifts and there's still a lot to sort out it's constant management um you know we're still able to get really good quality time among the pack but as soon as they're left to their own devices and and you know they might be unsupervised for half an hour all hell breaks loose mm. yeah, yeah. So there's definitely, there's definitely a huge amount of supervision required for these guys. Mm. And by going into anything else yeah. with more dogs to rehabilitate, it's just gonna be at the detriment of all the dogs that we've committed to already. So unfortunately we found ourselves at this point, you know, where because we have adopted and, and taken on all the dogs that nobody would it's limited 
what kind of capacity we can uh, help in the future. What you find me, darling? A ripped open toy? Where's all the stuffing? Oh, where's all the stuffing, Pluto? Where's all the stuff? I got it. I got it. Oh, yeah, you want it? You want it? What about this one, Lily? So, Tank and Chopper <coughs> make 17. And then we have. Um... So, we've got a couple. Is that right? Yeah, well, we've got a couple that are. Rover. Oh yeah, that's right. That brings us to 20 and, and a dingo cruiser. So, um... Oh, that little tongue. Oh, that little so tongue. So, the 18th oh, canine oh. that we've adopted is, um, is cruiser. Um, now, cruiser was adopted because he was looking for, um... He was looking for a special home for a long time. Yeah, he's been um, up for over two months, hasn't he? Yeah, and uh, it was a decision that we made, um, feeling that uh, he was going to be hard pushed to find um, a suitable home, and he was. He, you know, it was twelve over 12 months and um, no one suitable was coming forward yeah. um, and so we contacted the rescue and explained our situation and just said you know like do you think that cruiser would enjoy um, living out his life here you know with, with a pack of dogs there with, is. with a pack of dogs and um, he's very much enjoyed isn't he what you know it's yeah. it's a bit dramatic isn't it buddy he's he's bringing a lot of wild instincts to the pack which yeah. which aren't really helping him at this point but it's all part of you know balancing that natural instincts with you know the training and uh ad adapting to this environment um but he's he's doing well mm. he's doing really well mm. he is absolutely yeah um, I like to. And then we have uh, we have Rover, Rover, Diesel, and Abra. Now, let's talk about Rover. Um, now we haven't officially adopted Rover, you know. Um, yeah. And we have really. But I, I can, I can see just from the short period of time that we've been working with rescue dogs and with rehabilitating these guys the dogs that are perfect like you know hands down we're like these guys are going to get adopted they're amazing dogs there's nothing wrong with them no medical conditions very well behaved perfect nature yep they're like didn't come forward and then you've got a dog that is incontinent stinks of urine all the time he does. Um, and oh, we, sorry, mate. We actually... Yeah, sorry, um, mate. Oh, we're just talking about you. Had to say it, mate, because it's reality. Someone's someone's going to come and meet him, and we'll give him a bath, and then, you know, the next day they're going to be like, poor. Oh. So, um, so the reality is that um, Rover just urinates on himself every himself day. himself all day. And so what happens is that um obviously you know he'll go to sleep and he will just come out uncontrollably well what whatever but he's urinating on himself all day so yeah. by the end of the day he is covered in urine yeah. and he smells even and three so minutes after a bath we um we now bath him every day um to bring him inside and um you know goodness it's, it, it's, it a, it's a big really burden for someone to take on. Not a burden on. for us. No, for someone to take on, <laughs> yeah. I'm saying. Like, I understand we do. where they would be hesitant Absolutely. to take on a dog like that because who, it would affect their relationship with him. Well, who, you know? um, there's not many people that want to bath their dog every day. There's not or many people snuggle who... snuggle up to a 
smelly dog. Yeah. You know. Um, and also, uh, uh, you know, I guess maybe the whole nappy, you know, pyjama thing. I don't know. But yeah. we're kind of just saying it, I, it I, doesn't look good, no, does it? I realised because Barney... But we're also concerned right? about um, even if we were to really push that adoption, yeah. which we're not. It wouldn't work um, out, though. Yeah, we feel like it because might be a month or so the, in and they might just go... But I'll tell nah, you why this is too it's much. not going to work, and I know that it's not going to work, is because Barney was a purebred boxer puppy. You know, mm-hmm. as a, as and he, and he got over 150 applications, like fecally incontinent, will never be healed, and everyone pulled out. Mm. So here you've got Rover, and, and after the... living with both of them and mm. having them both in our lounge room, I have to say, honestly, Rover is 15 times worse than Barney mm. as far as dealing with those two conditions. Barney, 90% of the time, he's okay. You know, he might have a bit of a runny butt and you give him a quick wipe, you put a nappy on him, all done. But Rover can't go half a day without making himself smell like a urinal. Like, it's, it, it is something that I can see a huge issue for any normal person. A barrier. To yeah, and, and it's we a do, massive speed bump We do people. feel like here it seems like if there's any kind of barrier that... Um, and you know, you the know. last thing the last thing that I would want for Rover is for someone to come out and, and be like, yep, I can be that person. But then a couple of months in, even if the adoption stays on, but a couple of months in, they're like, oh, I can't have you inside. You're an outside dog. Mm. You know, that would kill me. Yeah. So for, I, I really think that and they, I for imagine Rover's they, sake. They limit their affection yeah. with him, you know, because... Yeah, I just put up with smelling like piss all day. You still give me a cuddle at the end of the day. So, goodness. We've still kept his adoption open in the hope that somebody might come forward. But yeah. at the same time, I think we no kind one, of no one's going just feel like, um, you know, very very is that dog that will just yeah. stay, this will be his home. No, someone, know? someone, did, we did get an application and then we made very clear like, that's sure. Right. Incontinence is not curable, yeah. but it is significant. Um, they do they, have to yeah. really accept that and, and understand. They just never reply. And they, they never come back to us. Um, so you got to be honest. Like yeah. you can't pull wool over someone's no. eyes. That's not fair to the no dog way. or to them. But you know, you know, we're shit, we're saying all of this. Because, hey, we love Rover. We're yeah. happy for him to stay and live a wonderful life here. The pack just wouldn't be the same without him. But, um, you know, people do kind of say things to us like about, you know, adopting all these dogs and not taking on other dogs. We honestly only think about the dogs that are in our care, don't mm. we? You know, we're not, yeah. we're not trying to hit certain numbers or anything like that. And here comes a dog into our pack like Rover and we're not trying to push him out, no. you know, and into the world and, and you no, know, set him up for failure. The, we only want the best outcome for all of the dogs that come through here. Yeah. That, is, that is the one goal that we have. Mm. And, you know, more often than not, the best, the best outcome for these dogs with medical issues, behavioural issues, uh, all of the above, you know, 90% of the time it's been here. Which is why we've gone from three to, you know, twenty-one canines in the matter of eighteen months. Mm. So then we're on to um, yeah. I mean, if we're talking about everything, which I feel like we are. Let it out, Sam. Well, even um, just medically, we know that there's a lot of dogs here that um, are going to require significant um, care. care, like, um, you know, as they age. And, um, you even know, it's not something already, we talk about. Like even Lily, even you know, we said, Lily, let's, yeah. let's not, um, let's just tell everyone that this is the diagnosis, but let's not talk about it anymore. You know, yeah. let's just have Lily, you know, live her best life. Mm. Um, you know, but 
like we don't know what that looks like do we like all we've been told is it's that she's going to need a wheelchair yeah. you know and um it's not going to be good um oh, little miss little miss red but we've got other dogs that you know there's going to be things. quite a few there's as, going to be quite as they a few. age as the pack yeah. ages you got to remember that these dogs are all backyard bred. They're not bred for temperament. They're not bred for good genes. They're accidental litters. They're, you know, they are a bunch of misfits. And so they're going to have a lot of medical issues. They're going to have, you know, stuff going on. So it is, it is a very um, demanding pack on all fronts mm. on you know hey mate on all, on all, oh, oh sorry joey did i pat someone else sorry darling and then um both financially both in time and effort in in you know structured training it's all of the above you know yeah um little shadow and then we have especially Ab this Abra. Hey, cut it out. There you go. It's you two again. Cruiser and tank. Um, so then we have. I think he might have learned his lesson a bit there. He what? He might have learned his lesson a bit there. He's shying away from it. Yeah, okay. He wouldn't usually. Oh, well. Then we've got Abra. Abra. Oh, she crazy. She's a tricky one, isn't she? She is tough. She she would be a fantastic only dog. Yeah. Only dog, but um, the conditions would be that um, Hello. people Hello. Uh, would have to crate her with any visitors. I don't think that we could trust anybody to even um, manage her, even with training. I, well, the right, I, the right person could. Like, anything's possible, but realistically, so it's we, unlikely. So we've never had anybody um, that, like, in our experience, Ooh, that could... Um, yeah. If we were to do it... I think the inside of his mouth is fine, Tank. Just if we were to um, safely uh, rehome her, uh, you know, and guarantee no risk. Like how you can never guarantee no risk with a dog like Abra. Never. There's, so this is where we're at with risk. Abra. Yeah. You know, like we're always assessing, you know, the risk associated with rehoming her. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm constantly managing her drive to bite. Constantly. Yeah, so it's, and for those at home that are just thinking that she's a puppy, please don't. You know, this dog is very serious. She, I'm just going to say it, but um, she, 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 she attacks our staff. Regularly. Like, you know, and we're talk, talking like proper. She, this dog is not your average, you know, and she's a puppy. Imagine what she's going to be like when she's two years old, you know? Yeah. Like, she's a liability. Um, so that's Abra. Anyone want to adopt her? <laughs> After that we're one? We're really selling her, aren't we? Selling, selling the story. The re honestly, the reason why we're quiet about it, you know, yeah. like we tried to kind of, we went down the path of, you know, these are the requirements associated with this is how you'd have to commit, you know, like in terms of the type of training and the avenues in which to, you know, whatever. Um, then we've gone quiet, like in terms of, haven't we, on, on the Abra one. Um, I don't know what to do with Abra. Because we don't feel like we've like we've said in this video, you yeah. know, like going out and saying like we could probably just say, you know, we we can't guarantee that she's going to, you know, um, not eat your neighbour. She'll probably eat you, you yeah. know, um, to start with. 
Like, can we just say that? Yeah, it's pretty true until you build a rapport with her. Like, she, she bit Luke um, on the first encounter, you know, from the shelter. But now that she's here, um, you'd have to look past her um, trying to attack you, for one. You know? Goodness. Like, what are we even saying here? This is why we're so, we, you know? Tell me to shut up. <laughs> are you saying the truth? <laughs> it's, um... It's such a moral dilemma for us. Yeah, we're, isn't not, we're not the type of people just to put the wool over someone's eyes or put a dog in a situation where it's not the best situation for them, and so that's why we end up with them all. Yeah. You know, we, we can't feel free find to us. like, please, like expressions of interest. Like if you feel that. Um, and you Abra, know. Abra would be a very good personal protection dog. There's no question about it. The only thing is the type of training and um, what's required to really bring out the best in that is not, again, not what we do at the farm. Mm. You know, we don't crate dogs. We don't limit their stimulation so that they create more drive to bite. We don't deprive them of experiences. Um, and in that world, that's what they do because they want the be all and end all to be that drive to anyway, want to bite. So, um, you know, we we don't want to go down that path for Abra, even though she's showing really good signs of being quite competent in that area. Um, so, we're doing what we do with all the dogs, which is trying to, you know, let her assimilate into this environment and the rest of the dogs and. You know, she, she does very well. She runs alongside and barks at the dogs. And then later on that night, she'll go and chew the blanket and think about all those times that she could have bit a dog today and she'll bite the blanket. Or a person. Yeah, and she'll be like, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. And then what happened? And then you, oh, oh, yeah. And then, and then you, oh, and she's just going through a list of all the bites she missed out on today. <laughs> she truly does. She comes in straight away, goes to a blanket and starts unloading them all. This one, this one. This one <laughs> sits there for about 20 minutes, gets them all out, and then everything's balanced again. And then there's, there's Diesel. Oh. Be careful oh, with the big boy. Oh, oh boy, mate. So then there's boy. Diesel, and um, Hello, mate. Diesel is a dog that we have just, we've seen early on, you know, he's similar to Molly where we did feel like um, he needs to find a, um, a home of his own. Yeah, um, he, he definitely strikes me as the, a dog that would prefer a smaller group of dogs mm. or even just his own humans. He, he doesn't show the signs of I'm thriving in this pack yeah. environment. He shows the signs of Oh, it's the, just it's just me and you. That. Yeah. Great. You know, and then he yeah. his true colours come out. So in that scenario, and they're few and far between, but they are out there that yeah. you know the farm's not Absolutely. the best option. There, for there's him. been a few people that have inquired about diesel. Yeah, there's, and so there's we're actually some prospects that it might be. That okay. it's gonna that it is gonna work out. Yeah. Um now he is one that we haven't forced the um like integration no. into the pack like fully completely yep. as in inside the house you know like all even, of that. Even no, but can i just say firstly the reason for that is because he doesn't want to That's what I was gonna he say. wants his own space but we also feel like let's just let's just allow him that because he wants it right um but also there's something else going on there if if we did go down the path of forcing him to um, endure. endure the pack life, maybe people might not um, inquire about him, you know? So he is getting um, a, a, a few inquiries and maybe if he went to that next level here just in this short term like we would be forcing him to do it against his will 
But, um, but also, I think it would also get the everyone out there to be like, oh, yeah, no, he's fine. We, we'll get another dog. That's right. And so we're just really hoping that he finds his own home for yeah. his own sake. It, it looks like there might be a couple of good options for him. We think so. Mm. Hey, if it gets to a point where nothing's working, then we're going to have to go down that path of, you know, Diesel, this is it, buddy. Mm. <laughs> You're just going to have to... You know, start to endure and in, and learn to enjoy pack life. Yeah, you know, if, if that's the case, that's the case. Yeah, you know? exactly. But it's not ideal for him, no. as far as I believe. So no. Therefore, you know. That's where we're at. Mm. Yeah, yeah, uh, and that's it, really, isn't it? Mm. Twenty dogs and a dingo. Yep. Mm-hmm. So. We love our pack. Mm. We love every single dog that is here at the farm. Uh, and we only want the best for them. You know, like, it. Is Nikki going? Yeah, she's going. This doesn't look like she has her bag with her, but I'll, I'll, I will run up in just a moment. Yeah, no, she's going. Okay. Oh, yeah, she does have a bag. Um, just quickly tell Chris that we'll be up in five. We really, truly feel like this is our family. You know, this, as crazy as it might seem, um, we love them all so much. And we are doing everything in our power to give them the best life we possibly can, aren't yeah. we? There's mm-hmm. so much that's going on behind the scenes and behind behind the scenes, you know, like in terms of, you know, like the financial commitment and um, time and, you know, all kinds of resources and everything to make this work. Mm. Um, And we genuinely um, just want them to have the best life and and, and not want for anything, you know, like if it's a medical requirement, if it's treatment, like whatever it is, we want to be able to give them that. Um, that's our mission, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, the, but when we talk about, you know, how everything has happened, um, it's, we're big believers in things happening for a reason and everything's meant to be. Yeah. And we kind of just go with, um, you know, uh, how we feel. What is, what is right? Yeah, what is what is the right thing to do? Um, and you know, maybe there's a bit of guidance there. I feel you know? I feel like we just keep getting presented with forks in the road, and we just keep following our hearts and just going with what's what we feel is right, what we feel is right, and we've just ended up here. That's it. And yeah. it will just continue. Yeah. You know, we feel like that that is how it is. And, um, you know, so... Well, I feel like at this point, the commitment we've made to these guys uh, is starting to become um, at risk if we take on more dogs from here. You know, they're, they're, it will have to be... A specific type of dog that could assimilate into the pack to not take anything away further from these guys and what they need. Already we've seen that with um, Cruiser, Abra and Diesel coming in late in the game, mm. it has significantly changed the harmony yeah, of the pack. That that one, to be honest, like as much as like, you know, Roscoe, Chance, mm. Nevaeh and Molly were um, big game changers, you know, in mm. the sense of like the business are getting shut down. Having um, Cruiser, Abra, and even Diesel, I guess. Um, yeah. But mostly Cruiser and Abra, isn't it, really? Yeah. In the pack, um, has really changed things significantly. And we are still managing the ripple effects of that. Um, because they're two, well, Abra is a very strong dominant dog mm. um and she will continue to be won't yeah. she 
Um, and then Cruiser, he's a wild canine, a wild animal. Um, he has his own, you know, very strong instincts and um, Behavior. behaviors and requires a lot of um, management and training. So um, that has changed things a lot, you know, at the moment. The way that I put it, that people could probably best understand is that Abra and Cruiser pretty much walk around with backpack flamethrowers on and we're, <laughs> and we're just constantly putting out spot fires everywhere and they're just like <laughs> and we're like walking around stomping it out everywhere oh dear oh goodness that just sounds terrible well that's um, reality oh isn't it well, think about it. It is. And, you know, like... All listen, the dogs, we, perfectly at harmony, and then we introduce those guys. <laughs> we've talked about it on a lot of occasions that, you know, we're just working towards peace and harmony and about everyone happy. And, you know, we're going to get there. Extinguish the flamethrower, mate. But, um, you know, right at the moment, the uh, there's, the a, there's a lot of... Oh, Diddy, you are such a beautiful girl. Good girl, Good girl. Good girl. Oh, Lily. Good girl, darling. Okay, well, we just wrap it up, I think. I think they've had enough. Yeah, sorry about the... Uh, oh, that's a ball right in my crutch. Please don't get that one, Fredo. Hold on, hold on. I don't want it down there. Um... Yeah, well, hopefully everyone's enjoyed the update. It has been a very detailed and thorough rehash for a lot of people, but it'll probably be new information for a fair few people as well. So fingers crossed you enjoyed it and you're all up to speed and you understand where we're at and why we're here and how we got here and the way that we make decisions. It's for this guy. It's also you, mate. Ooh. Ooh. Cool. See you guys soon.